this is the Watch Dog, and welcome back to Fun with Watches. If watches weren't fun, you'd only need one. Today, we're going to review the Pagani Design PD1758 GMT World Time. Let's start with the wrist check. I'm wearing this Addy's Dive AD2030 Desert Watch. And Grogo is wearing my Pagani Design PD1717. Grogo said 3PO was all in a panic. Wicket the Ewok called him up and said he was starving. So 3PO got the Max Rebo band and Figure and Diane in the model nose to make a fundraising album called We Are the Worlds. I asked if they raised enough credits to feed the Ewoks. He said it turns out they weren't starving. Wicket was out of 3PO's breakfast cereal and was sick of eating oatmeal. All right, let's take a look at the watch. Comes in this typical box. I'm kind of surprised it didn't come in their newer box since it's a newer watch, but maybe they gave up on that newer box. But here it is. Isn't that a nice looking watch? I really like it. This is a fun choice from Pagani Design, basically taking their GMT Master II homage and mixing it up a bit and producing something Rolex could have done but didn't. The Rolex GMT Master was a product of the jet age and designed with world travelers in mind, so Pagani Design decided to have a little fun and put a map of the Earth on the dial. They even used the polar stereographic projection so you flat earthers out there can also be included in the world traveling fun. Then, as an added convenience, airport codes have been added to the bezel, making tracking a third time zone a bit easier, as you might not know that Los Angeles is minus 8 GMT, but you know that the airport is LAX. I live in the central U.S. time zone, so my home airport is CHI for Chicago. Keep in mind that using the airport code with the GMT handset to GMT, all times will be assumed to be standard, as the watch doesn't know about daylight savings time. Underneath the airport codes are the 24-hour markers, which can be a bit difficult to see as they are blue on blue and very small. This watch uses the rather new Seiko NH34 GMT movement, which kind of defeats the purpose of this World Traveler watch as it is a collar or office GMT. So it would have been nice if it used the new Miyota 9075 Traveler's GMT, but that probably would have quadrupled the price. If you don't like the blue, this watch also comes in red. If you don't like the map of the earth, there are also plain dials. If you don't like the jamboree bracelet, there is also the three link style. The watch is 40.1 millimeters if you measure at the bezel. 47.9 millimeters lug to lug with barely protruding end links, just barely. 13.1 millimeters thick if you don't count the Cyclops. 20 millimeter lug width and weighs 137 grams on the supply bracelet with four links removed. The bezel is 120 click unit directional. The action is really good and there's no back play. Of course, being a GMT watch, it should be a 48 click bi-directional, but that's just the reality of the AliExpress homage world. It's just cheaper to make the watch the same as their dive watches. Then if you look at the bezel, it has a ceramic insert, and then it has all the airport codes. In the montage, I was mistaken, because I said my home airport code was CHI for Chicago, but it looks like my home airport code is MEX for Mexico. So pardon my mistake there. Then underneath the airport codes, you have some numerals for the hour markers, but look at that, we got blue on blue. So it's kind of hard to see. Then also, if you look at the, I think KHI is for Hawaii. If you look at the, no, it's not Hawaii. That would be in the, this is in the Eastern Hemisphere. But if you look at the eye there, it looks like they forgot to uh, put the white in that eye. And then we do have a red marker for the London time zone, which is also GMT which stands for Greenwich Mean Time. Of course, the world has adapted. We no longer use GMT, we use UTC, which is universal, universal time code. But GMT is, everybody knows what it means. Not everybody knows what UTC means. To use the bezel, you just set it to the home time, the airport code of wherever you're at. For example, mine would be Mexico even though I'm not in Mexico, but it's the same time zone. 
Oops, went too far. All right. So let's set it to Mexico. And see the GMT hand is set to GMT time. And so you would look there and at the hour marker, you would know that it's almost eight o'clock, which is true. Then we have the dial. The dial has the map of the Earth in the middle. Like I said in the montage, you have the option of getting it without the map of the Earth. But I prefer it with the Earth. I just think it's more fun. And my channel is called Fun With Watches. And then we have the indices. The indices are looks like they're uh, loom dots. They're not, there's no metal barriers or borders. And the loom is, believe it or not, is actually really good. And then we have the hands. The hands are your typical Rolex style. We have the fence post minute hand, Mercedes hour hand, lollipop second hand. And then we have the GMT hand with the arrow tip. Then we have a data three with a Cyclops. And look at that magnification. In fact, I think it's too much magnification. It's kind of glaring. You look at it and it's just kind of overwhelming. So it would have been nice if they would have backed off the magnification just a little bit. Normally I complain that they don't magnify en enough, but this case it looks like it magnifies too much. Then we have a sign screw down crown. The thread action is fine. You don't feel a lot of resistance, pops nicely. And when you go to screw it back down, it catches right away. No big deal there. Then uh, you notice though the crown guards hardly protect the crown at all. They're more like a little crown pedestal than guards. And then we have a flat sapphire crystal. It's sapphire. I tested it. And uh, I don't know if there's AR coating or not, but uh, it's doing a pretty good job of not reflecting, so I think there is. Then we have the case. The case is your basic oyster-style case. And it's uh, polished on the sides, brushed up top and bottom. It's a nice case. Does the job. Then we have a display case back. It says Pagani Design Stainless Steel. Then gives the model number and 100 meters water resistant, which is plenty for a non-dive style watch. And then underneath the case back, you see the NH34 movement. The NH34 movement is a fairly new movement that Seiko came out with. It's base, basically a modification of the NH35 with the added GMT complication. It's a 24 joule movement that's 3 hertz, hand winds, hacks, and has a bi-directional rotor. And they're usually fairly accurate right off the shelf. And if you've never seen one being used, how you use it is when you put the crown in the date position. If you go counterclockwise it changes the date and if you go clockwise it changes the gmt hand and it jumps in hour increments it's not like the ronda 515 where it's a smooth movement where there's always a danger of going too far so that's always nice of course this is a collar gmt not a traveler's gmt a traveler's gmt you'd be moving the hour hand and not the gmt hand So let's go ahead and put it on the time grapher and uh, see how accurate it is. Here it is on the time grapher. As you can see, we have some really good numbers here. Plus five, plus six, no beat error, and a pretty healthy amplitude. So this movement is running great. So I'm perfectly happy with this movement. It's always nice that it's fast and not slow because it's fast movement is much easier. All you have to do is pull out the crown and hack it and wait for time to catch up. Where our slow watch, you have to actually move the hands. The bracelet is a five link jamboree style. I've been trying to avoid using the whole J word trademark term. And it's a nice looking one. Uh, 
the flex of a this style of bracelet's normal and it does have solid end links and we do have screw pin adjusters but look at the size of those screw heads they are tiny they are so tiny that the screwdriver that it came with there's no way you're going to use this one on it it's way too big so you're going to have to get your own screwdriver with a much smaller head it would have been nice if they would have just used push pins as i know screw pins are considered to be a more of a premium item but they're so small that they were really difficult to use then we have the clasp the clasp is your typical rolex style and uh my big complaint about these is the simple fact that it's really difficult to use the micro adjust because you basically have to pull out the pull out the link here and then get a tool and uh, see and you only have one slot right there to to move the spring bar and it's very difficult to use the micro adjust of course, if it had push pins and not these tiny little screw pins, it would be easier just to remove and add links because, if, as you can see, the micro adjust isn't any smaller than the links. But basically, I know this doesn't have the GMT Master 2 coloring, but it does look a lot like a GM Master 2, so I'm okay with the class because it is basically a Rolex homage. Here is the watch and my seven and a half inch wrist. I think it looks nice. I removed four links to fit on my wrist. So you should be able to wear this about eight and a half. Anything bigger, you'll need more links. Of course, you can always let out the, the link here too and make it a little bit larger. But it looks really nice. It's a nice looking watch. Here we are in the Loom Room. Normally Loom is Pagani Designs Achilles heel, but sometimes they surprise us. As we speed up the time, all I can say is surprise. Instead of typical Pagani Design Loom with really weak hands and so-so indices, we have some pretty good hands and markers. Even the background world glows for a little bit. It looks like the blue glow of BGW9 and the hands are even slightly stronger than the indices. There is no loom on the bezel, but that is normal for a GMT. What do I like about this watch? Well, it's a fun way of celebrating the world traveling heritage of GMT watches. It has the new NH34 movement and it has some of the best loom on a Pagani design I've ever seen. What are my gripes and groans? Really hard to read our markers on the bezel. The Cyclops magnifies too much. And it would have been nice to have a bi-directional bezel. Do I recommend this watch? Yes, this watch is great. An NH34 powered tribute to world traveling that looks and wears great. You may not be a real world traveler, but you'll feel like one wearing this awesome watch. Well, thank you for watching my review of the Pagani Design PD 1758 GMT World Time, and I will be back with an unboxing video. I have three watches from AliExpress that just came in. Be sure and like and subscribe to my channel. Bye.